Hello guys, today's video is a pretty big one. It's all about the Inferno. Showing you the prep process towards the Inferno with my build. And of course, some action at the Inferno as well. So all in one package. As always, if you are enjoying the videos and you want more, give the video a like as it will let me know. And consider subscribing so that way you don't miss out on the next video. On the last video, I managed to get the blowpipe, one of the most important items that I wanted for the Inferno, but we're not done yet. The prep process is quite arduous. There is a lot of things to get. First being Bruise and Restores, I'm already working on that with TOB. You will hear more about the prep stuff as the video goes on. Holy shit, there we go. Now we know how to use the blowpipe properly. So nice. There you go. Defense is lower, so I can actually just spam the crystal bow. Why is defense is low? No, I just healed. Fine, I'll heal again. Holy shit, blowpipe is so good. Five blowpipe spec heals are insane. Yo, someone got purple. Hey, it wasn't me. Uh, that's uh, that's cool. We got it. Someone got a purple aura. Yeah, these rates are so busted. It's like one in three to see one or something. Open it up, brother. Oh my god, you got a scythe? What? Damn, dude. Good luck charging it. Actually, use it on charge. See how good it is. This is the perfect time to use the uh, blowpipe spec, actually. Yeah, this is actually the perfect time. There you go. Because then we can deal a lot of DPS to the crabs and also heal. So, nice. We got it this time. Yes, pillars aren't falling. Awesome. Holy shit. Yay, deathless. Deathless run. Awesome. Task completed. So I got 200 plus Dragon Bones from Zora. I'm going to use it all up at the Ecto and see what I can get. Whatever I can get, I'll just bring to the Inferno. Nice. 1750 total. Alright. <clears throat> okay, last Bones. I don't even know if I can get a level. Ah, we're not going to get a level. But it's okay. 74 prayer. Honestly, I feel like that's probably good enough. It's just uh, more prayer points back from the prayer pot, so... Watch this, watch this. <laughs> Yo, it's so stupid, man. <laughs> oh shit, um, I'll try to save him, but I don't know if Crystal Bow can reach. Oh, I saved him! Oh my god, Crystal Bow is so good. Oh, nice. Damn, we almost made 16 minutes. We almost did, but... Oh, someone got a purple. Well, actually, I shouldn't even be surprised. We get like a purple every three rates with, with the new rates. Ooh, a Fernic Defender. Hell, dude. I would love to get that first, probably. <laughs> Ooh, Mahogany Trees. Nice. That's a that's a task. What's my restores looking like? Ooh, 26 brews, 22 restores. We're definitely good for a few Inferno attempts. If not, yeah, plenty, plenty right there. That's good enough of TLB. Time to repair it again. This time it should be cheaper. Yep, 720k. Nice. There we go. But yeah, it lasted about a week, so that's good. Lasted a very long time. So, brews and restores are done. Prayer is done. All that's left is to unlock Arscania so I can get myself an accumulator, some Zami wines from Rage Pots, and. The Rune Thorn Axe, which I will cover in more detail very soon. Oh, there it is. Baby. Oof. The Superior Banshee is really disturbing looking, but that's another point. Shout out to my boy JFK was FK for showing me that there's a lot of bones under the Dick Sight Cave. It's perfect for the Demon Slayer quest where you got to get 25 bones. A good thing I saved all the easy quests for last. There's some things you just don't realize until you look at it closely, like for the 10th time. So this last part of the Soul's Bane, this area is actually a brain. It's a representation of the boy's mind in physical form. Actually, mind blowing. It all started when I noticed the gauntlet floor was flowers. Yay, Soul Spain done. Okay, last task, boys. It's gonna be easy because I'm just gonna tie it all in with the Varag Medium Diaries. Boom, combo. C -c combo, there we go. And of course the last 
area is now unlocked. <laughs> okay, time to finally unlock our last area, Asgardia. Nice, that's where we uh, get ourselves some Gawars action later on. Yep, Asgardia, let's do it. Unlock time. Nice. There we go. Final area unlocked. Alright, accumulator. Nice, okay, we got it now. So, from 90% ammunition save to 98%. So that's going to be really good for uh, mainly just the blowpipe, you know. We've got to really save those darts. So the final obstacle to the inferno is finding something that can help me mob the nibblers, the things that eat the pillars, my uh, safe spots and stuff, which is a crucial part of how I can stay alive in the inferno. So I can't do chins and I can't do ancients. Yes, you might be saying, but Priv Dennis has chins. Can't you catch them? I actually can't because in that region and in my other two regions, there is no box traps. And I believe it is an unintended thing that they forgot to add because I asked Jagex about it and they said it's too late to add it. So as in, they probably should have, that's fine. But we have Runethorn Axes and I think in theory it should do the job. I know my boy Verif, he's, you know, theorizing Runethorn Axes for his uh, Karamja UIM Inferno attempt. So I thought, you know what, let's give that a shot, right? Let's put it to the test. But to get the rune don't axe the only way to get it reasonably is through ninja implings so i gotta do some weird grind that i've never done before evolving implings first time for me it's a one in 20 from the ninja so it's not too bad after a bit of research with twitch chat and experimenting i found the best way to find rare implings is a mix of pearl pearl scouting and also scouting outside of pearl pearl so in the main game there are spawns where implings will spawn usually within the start of the hour and usually within the halfway point in the hour so for example it'll be around 1 p.m and around 1 30 p.m so in each of the heat maps there is a rare impling spawn so there's a chance that a rare impling will spawn so that means nature implings and higher has a chance to spawn so i had to find a spot that was the least visited because i don't want competition and that spot was the Grotto in Mort Meyer. Once I scout all the worlds and I can't find anything else, I will move on to Pearl Pearl and I'll try to find some imps there. And when the next respawn timer for outside of Pearl Pearl is about to happen, I will go back to the swamp and repeat the process and then just keep cycling through. And I also had some friends occasionally shout out an imp that they found. And yeah, I'll just nab those two. Oh my, oh dragon. Okay, I'll take it. I mean, yo, darts, at least. Oh, a dragon longsword? Yes. Yes, boys. Mission success. Here we go. Dragon dagger? All right, okay, okay. I see how it is. Nice. Here we go, boys. Oh, onyx bolts, yo. Are you serious? Come on. Ho, ho. Ninja impling number 10. Here we go. Ah, prayer pots. Let's see if I've done that already. Oh, okay, I have. Oh, shit. Ah, oh, dragon arrows. <laughs> I, oh, oh, my God. Dragon impling again? What? Oh, mystic robot bottoms. Cool. Best in slot magic gear. Oh, another ninja impling. Oh, my God, dude. Whoa, that's insane. Here we go. Oh, split the heart. I've gone 14 in the surface world and I've gone 5 in Pearl Pearl. I've actually gone 19. Wow. And what other chances? Oh, rune darts? No. That one's good. Uh not not throwing axes, but rune darts. We're killing it right now, boys. Here we go. Oh, rune claws, dude. Yeah. Oh, dragon bones, man. Okay. That was totally worth the snipe. Good karma, Kappa. Ooh, Mystic Boots. Cool. That's best in slot mage boots for me. I don't even I don't even have um I don't even have mage boots. The pathing is so atrocious, man. Thank you to Xamarin. Oh yes! Oh baby! We got it. Let's go. Shout to the boy here, dude. Some rental for that scout. 30, exactly 30. 
literally as I was hopping to this world, on the first world, I saw a DM, but I was like, nope, I gotta grab this ninja and bling. And, well, was it worth it? It was definitely worth it, dude. Okay, that's enough wines of Zammies for range pots. Plenty. So, this is my Inferno setup attempt, number one. A good amount of brewers, a good amount of restores, two range pots. And uh, we're going to bring some tank gear because our accuracy is going to be fine with the range relic. So, we can probably just tank at the start of the waves because we probably need it. And I also brought my rune play body for later waves so I can get on full on tank. I'm a little lazy to go for Barrel's body, but we're just going to go with the full on tank. And of course we have the full range switch for when we don't have to tank anything. But yeah, rune thorn axes for nibblers, crystal bow for most of Inferno, blowpipe for like sets at Zog and in times of, you know, danger when I need to kill something really fast. And for heals. And yeah, I think we're good. Some combo food just in case, you know, if I mess, mess things up. It's time to send it. We dive in to the inferno. Let's see how this works. Ah, huh, okay. Okay, that was interesting. That was an interesting uh, first use of it. Man. Whoa, that was... Okay, so... There's like a cooldown. Right off the bat, I already noticed two major problems with the Rune Thorn Axe. For some reason, the Rune Thorn Axe doesn't use 30% spec at once. It only uses 10% per hit. So the Weapon Specialist Relic doesn't affect it. It doesn't reduce the spec use at all, which kind of sucks because that means I can't spam the Rune Thorn Axe as much. And the second issue is that the Rune Thorn Axe, you can't spam it very fast. Even though the attack relic for range would theoretically make the Rune Thorn Axe shoot as fast as a normal blowpipe, but you have to wait for the animation of the spec to finish before you can shoot another one. So yeah, that's also another problem too. So a lot of unexpected incompatibilities with the relics of my choice. But at least it's still mobs, so we're gonna have to accommodate for, you know, these issues. Oh my god, are you serious? Fuck, dude. At least the blowpipe heals are hella reliable, but oh my god. Yeah, now the pillars are really low health, so it's not worth it. It's definitely uh, worth a restart. Yeah, the pillars took so much damage already. So we'll, uh, before we waste any more time, let's try again with a better start. Okay, blowpipe's pretty decent too. So if I'm low on uh, spec energy from one way to another, I think blowpipe's probably the best way to deal with the nibblers. So I'm gonna just tell you what I learned on the Inferno run so far with the Rune Throne Axes especially with League's abilities in mind. In retrospect, I actually did not need to use the Rune Thorn Axis as much as I did in this run because on the easier waves, the Blowpipe would have been a lot better. Now, I realized that the Rune Thorn Axis is super helpful in two big situations. The first one is when the wave only spawns Nibblers. There are a few waves where there's only Nibblers and the Rune Thorn Axis, if you have 100% spec, you can mob them all with the Rune Thorn Axe three times, and that's super nice for clearing. And the second situation is when you only have the North Pillar left, because the Nibblers will always come to you, so you can always just stand on that pillar and be safe from a bunch of mobs and just mob them down with the Rune Thorn Axe. But other than that, honestly, the Blowpipe and the Crystal Bow is much better. But I had to struggle a lot before I learned all the optimal ways to use the Rune Thorn Axe. When Ego Eye doesn't even impact the Rune Thorn Axes. Ah, oh, these codes for Rune Thorn Axes are so bad. They need to rework the code and make it better, honestly. For real. Here's an example of dealing with the Nibblers with the Blowpipe and prayer flicking the minions correctly on a medium tier wave. I can do that pretty easily. 
Damn, that pillar is gonna die. Dang, that pillar fell. Feels bad, man. That really sucks. Alright, yo, this blowpipe's definitely so nice. Like, it's insane. The one six speed just absolutely... Once it touches something, it's gonna disappear in a few seconds. Pretty much. Uh, especially, like, the lower HP mobs. It will disappear. Fuck. Okay. Ah, uh, goddamn. The pillars are taking way more damage than I would like, so I really need to step on my game and just unleash the blowpipe some more. Had to use a trump card for that. Worth it, worth it. God damn. I need uh, I needed to save that so bad. Okay, that thing is definitely dead. I won't be able to save it. Yeah, I can't save that. It's definitely dead. Yes! Good spawn, good spawn. Yes! Oh my god. That helps so much. That was so fucking hard. Yes! We're Gucci, boys. We're Gucci! Let's go! God damn, I had to. Shit. Oof. Oh my god. Good thing I ate that brew. Holy shit, if I didn't eat that brew, I would have been dead. I'm just gonna drink the brew, honestly. God, that's hard. Yikes, man. Supplies are... Uh, wish it was better, dude. Wish it was better. Wish it was better. But we still have a shot. We still have a shot. Those were the hardest waves, hands down, I've ever done in any kind of Inferno. Which makes sense. But after the waves, though, the Jads and Zugs, I'm not gonna lie to you. It was kind of anticlimactic because I just absolutely destroyed those waves yes oh my god such a good spawn this is really good that means I get to kill the rangers first holy shit this is insane what the f crystal bow is so overpowered This guy's about to get deleted. You're about to get deleted? If I stand still, you're dead? Holy crap, dude. I can't believe we actually did it. We actually did it. What? I lied, I lied, I lied. Oh my god, we actually did it. Oh my god, dude. That was so hard, though. The waves were so hard, dude. What the hell, man? Oh my god, the waves were so freaking hard. But Zuck was so easy. Only one set. That Zuck was like, I was on task, 
And then I was on like another task or something. I was like st stacking Slayer tasks or something, dude. Wow, dude. I want to say a big thank you though to all the Twitch viewers that have helped me so far with this league because I wouldn't have gone this far this fast without all of the contributions of my viewers and their uh, additional knowledge. Also, thanks to my boy Veer for giving me some information during the run about the Rune Thorn Axes. He's been researching a lot, of course, for his Karamja run uh, one of these days. But yeah, this is definitely going to be one of the biggest single achievements in this league for me personally. Thanks a lot for watching.